snare of course that's one of definitely one of the most important things you can do in a mix that you have to get nailed this once again uh, i was experimenting for a long time with a sound and i finally found a sound that i like and that's actually combining the easy drummer snare which is just this i'm turning everything off this is just the dry easy drummer snare Oh yeah, a little bit of reverb. That's the dry, easy drummer snare. Um, I played with EQ with the snare a little bit, but really, in the end, I was just like, you know what, the snare just sounds best if you just leave it alone. And that's I try to use that as a basic guideline for all recording, really, is try to do as little as possible, because if you recorded your instruments properly, then there's always going to be something awesome about just the raw instrument and the cool thing about easy drummer is it's professionally recorded professional you know top of the line snare top of the line microphones and it really doesn't get any better than that's you know there are some some great snares out there but i love the easy drummer one but you know eventually i was just like you know i really don't need all this other stuff to to mask it so i just threw this one simple easy mix preset on it it's just snare as a preset that's built into easy mix basically if you uh if you click on snare you see there was an asterisk there every time you make an adjustment on an easy mix preset it changes to an asterisk that way you know that um there's an adjustment that's been made so it's not a, a pure preset it's just an altered preset now you click on snare that's with uh, the basic snare thing this is without it so you, you can tell with it added on, it just adds a, a little bit more punch. There wasn't enough punch for me, especially with a faster paced song like this, was like a mid tempo. I like to crank the compression a little bit because you don't want the the decay to be so long that it's muddying up the other instruments. So if you if you compress it a little higher, it it gets in your face and then it gets out of there the way you want it in the mix um, which is good in a mix because you don't want like I said you don't want the decay on the snare to linger too, so long that it starts cutting into the guitar frequencies and then it just messes everything up so anyways this took me a while to play with it and eventually I was just, just like you know Occam's Razor the simplest answer is usually the right one so just slap one preset on there and crank the heck out of it with a compressor this is basically, it's called Snap, but it's basically a compressor. So here's it with just the preset by itself. And here's with the compressor all the way up. Much better. I love that. So anyways, that's all I did with um, this part of the snare. Now a new trick that I'm doing now is, is I'm layering the snare a little bit. For once in my life, I found a purpose for the Rock Kit snare built in the Garage Band. Um, it's got um, a cool low end that the um, the Easy Drummer snare does not have. Basically, if you add this Rock Kit snare, this is it with nothing on it at all, just dry. Nothing crazy special. Um, But it does have some unique qualities that can be utilized in a really cool way. Like if what I did was, I mean, the first thing is I don't really like the sound of the rock kit snare that much. So I was like, I got to squash the heck out of it with some compression so I can you know, use this in a way that I like. Also, there was this ringing in the middle that was really bothering me. Here's it with the... Uh, that's just dry. If you turn, basically I turned the EQ on and squashed the middle out a little bit. That got rid of a little bit of the ringing. But what's left, you can hear that punchiness, that purr, purr, which is cool because if you add that and you layer it with this other snare, it's basically that's what I'm getting out of the snare is the punch that this doesn't have. This has the pop, this has the punch. And going hand in hand is a really rocking sound. And I didn't do anything too crazy with this second layer snare. All I did was basically compress the heck out of it with some easy mix presets.
Uh, this one I use that same snare thingy. Um, click snare, the compression isn't as high. I think I, I wanted just a little bit of bleed through on the low end just so it kind of the punch sounds more punchy. If you crank that up too much, it'll it'll decay too quickly and it'll lose the, the purpose. This one is tape simulator. It's basically a compressor. I don't know what a tape simulate like tape compression is, but it's something that some people are really into, and I'm glad they put it on here because it sounds awesome if it's used right. So basically, snare two, snare layer two, I put this EQ to squash that middle out to get rid of the ring while leaving the low end to go punch, so you get the punch. And I put those two compressors on with the Easy Mix. Definitely not usable by itself, but here's with the Easy Mix snare. Together, you can hear they have like this, this cool rattle and a cool like low end punchiness that you wouldn't have otherwise. And here's with the uh, kick and snare so you can hear it. And you see with just the easy mix snare and the kick, it sounds like it sounds like uh, like a gorilla chasing popcorn, which isn't all bad if you like that sound. But um, I'd like a a gorilla chasing um, I don't know a, a trash can more. So I added that low end thing here. So it sounds a little fatter. So that's one of my new favorite tricks is uh, snare layering. So try that out. Try out the uh, the rock hit snare as a secondary snare to whatever your primary snare is. And another trick is you don't want that rock, the rock hit snare to be too loud. Yeah, if you want to use it as your primary snare, you do want it louder. But if you want it as a second layer, uh, whatever your second layer is, you might have to tweak the volume a little bit. And as you can see, this one is a little quieter than the 